My dad, he was a conservationist growing up. A lot of it was more, you know, to conserve moisture and money than to, to build things. He thinks I'm a little crazy for trying to grow two crops at once instead of growing on one. So you saw him down in the disc bind. He started cutting down some rye and alfalfa mix for hay. So he's still working some, partially retired now. He doesn't have a whole lot to do with cattle anymore, but he still comes back and helps a lot. So, and then we've got uh, other family members that are very integral parts of keeping things moving. I am Candace Olson Mazera. I am, we live near McLaughlin, South Dakota, in north central South Dakota. And we farm and ranch about 600 cows and uh, rotationally graze and farm about 10,000 acres. Our family has been in this area since the 20s. Um, they purchased this ranch that we're on in 74, my grandpa did. And so there was minor rotational grazing out on the place. The pastures were about a thousand acres a piece. And back in the day, there was everybody dissed and drilled and that's the way you farmed and summer followed and cultivated and everything. And so dad switched to no-till and oh, 90s and we went all no-till and planted cover crops and started rotational grazing here in the last five years. We have really intensified our rotational grazing and use of cover crops. My husband, Bob, is very much involved. Uh, we're partners. 14 years ago, Bob and I got married and we were still calving heifers in February or the 10th of March and then cows start 15th or 20th of March and he just said, well, this is about the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he said, why don't we push this back? We're killing ourselves to save a few calves and the ones that you don't save, you can't sell dead ones. So let's just have a little bit smaller calf in the fall and let's push it back and so make our lives a little easier and can get our farming done most of the time before calving even starts. Uh, so April 23rd is what we shoot for now. Then they're calving right on primarily green and grass and the nutritional level is much better for them and, and so as long as we're watching for grass tending because we do have quite a bit of tame grass where we calf and we've been rotating. Oh well this year was a we weren't close to a barn at all we were you know four miles away from the closest barn so um, we just set up a tub uh, next to a corral and had a few that we had to get in, but otherwise they think they have a lot better on their own when the weather's nicer too. Just much more relaxed and so we were mob grazing. We started out on 160 acres and have about 620 cows there. And they were there from April 1st until, oh, April 29th or so. And then they went to the next quarter and yeah, we're trying to control our Kentucky bluegrass. We've got quite the invasion going on. Kentucky bluegrass, yeah, it doesn't have a deep root base. It actually gets a, a, a layer of matted of roots on the surface that can actually help shed water, so it doesn't infiltrate water as well. It has a competitive advantage because of that. We'll start choking out your western, your green needle, needle thread, other warm season grasses. I've been working with, uh, with Candace uh, and, and Bob on their grazing system for about five years now, and it's been pretty enjoyable for one just to see how the amount of grass that we're growing now compared to what we were before. It was in good shape before, but it's it's even getting even better. We had a bad drought in 2002, and so Dad started out fencing all a bunch of the fields because there was nothing else to graze. Um, and in 06, he actually shipped his, his cows all the way up to Mandaree, North Dakota, because we had another severe drought and he wasn't gonna overgraze that time, so. And then we finished fencing a lot of his fields then and uh, grazing the cows that fall on fields when they came back from North Dakota. Now we try to get the cows, they stay on grass until about the end of October. We try to get the cows and calves out on, on cover crops, which we plant right behind the wheat or chickpea ground or rye harvest. We're pretty much chasing the combines around planting cover crops. We're trying to get them out on every acre 
is what we're shooting for because we think it has a positive impact on them converting nutrients and spreading manure and, and urine around to help fertilize. And, and especially if we feed out there, we try to put our hay back on the hay ground that it came off of is what we're shooting for. So we're not constantly exporting nutrients and carbon off the land. So we're adding it back to it. So on a normal day, I wake up and usually feed the calf in the barn if there's any bottle calves. And then we go check cows and do whatever needs done for the day, whether it be fencing, taking out mineral, um, helping the guys in Candace move fields if we're planting or harvesting or whatever. I guess just kind of jump in wherever I'm needed. My best day is probably just waking up and going to do cow stuff, I guess. I love cows. A good day is, well, number one, waking up in the morning. Yeah, that's always fun. Um, seeing the sunrise is great, but getting to work alongside family, getting to teach Cater things and having her ask questions and help out and learn, and that means a lot. Getting out in the fresh air, seeing, it's cliche, but fruits of your labor over the years and how things are improving, and especially when it rains. A rainy day is one of my best days. Work till dark, have supper with the family, call her a day, hopefully you sleep good, wake up and do it again. So, and somebody else to clean the house and do dishes. <laughs>